hello there everybody and welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips with me Sally Cathcart and today I'm just wanting to bring out three books that I want to share some thoughts with you about. So the first book, well this, um, I had a, a very good friend who, who sent me a text last week, very exciting, and said oh there's a little something, a little, little surprise for you on its way and within an hour Amazon had rung the bell and this was what was inside. Now this is a book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and although I have a previous version of it here which I bought ooh, when it first came out I think in the 90s I found it deeply um, inspiring at that point and it's been so lovely to, to renew my acquaintance with the book itself. And Julia Cameron talks about um, something she calls daily pages which is getting up and writing something every single day, no matter the, the, the banality or whether you've got anything important to say or not, that is not the issue. The thing is to get it out of your head. Now, for those of you that know me, you'll know that I'm always encouraging teachers to write, to write things down, not just keeping ideas in your head. You need to get them down on paper and then you can stand back and reflect on them. In your head, they just end up being a muddle that really can, can cause a lot of anxiety and stress. Get them down on paper and you're able to see them literally in black and white. So daily pages is one way of doing it. it I'm, I don't do them any longer like that, but just to sit down and write freely. Free writing is another way of calling this. I would really recommend, especially those of you that are on half term a little bit this week. The other thing she recommends in this, which I love, is artist dates. So having a date with yourself, having a date with a piece of art, having a date with a concert. Now these days there's lots and lots of concerts online, there's lots of places you can go and listen. Just make a date that, you know, on Saturday at 11 o'clock I'm going to sit down with a coffee, or even Sunday at 11 o'clock go to the piano boat, for example, and listen to some of the wonderful recitals. We absolutely need to keep replenishing renewing ourselves in now more than anything so just make sure that you do a bit of reflective writing and maybe make an artist state with yourself i've already said that i did do some daily pages and one of the books i did it in was this book now this is an old book of mine it's a leather book and i'm pretty sure my parents brought it back to me from um from italy and it's, it's just, you know, these beautiful Italian books. And I think I first wrote in this. I haven't got very far, I have to admit. But I first wrote in this, oh, 2005, okay. And I got this out recently after being inspired by the wonderful Graham Fitch. And he'd come along to do a graduation speech at, uh, for the teachers in the community who'd taken the 90-day teaching challenge. 90 days of really getting deep, deep, deep into the teaching so that we can all develop. And he said, was talking at this um, graduation about a book that he has that lives on his piano and after his teaching, if there's something, little nugget of an idea that's really struck him or he's used certain words, he writes it down. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I have done that before and this is the book I've done it in. So I got it out and you know, it just lived on the, on the shelf here, so not exactly far away. But now it's living on top of my piano and yes, I am writing in it. And it's great. I might wish I'd have done it for the last 30 years, but it's better, better late than never, isn't it? Um, things like just writing down the mechanics of playing. I was using that, that phrase in a lesson and uh, it really worked. Um, let's sort out the mechanics, shall we? So that we actually put technique, etc., in its place. It is just one part rather than taking over completely. And another phrase I've been using recently is invisible, invisible rests, invisible music. And I might well come back to that um, at another Tuesday teaching tip. So have a book, write down all your brilliant teaching ideas that you come up with before you forget them. Let it live on your piano and refer to it. So the third book, that's your second book, the third book I want to refer to, and this actually isn't the book, but this is sort of a stand-in, if you like. The third book is a, a practice book that my teenage pupil, Sasha, has had since 2013. She has a purple 
practice book and it has a spiral bound edge here and every week since 2013 she would take one page and she would write in it actually I started off I think she was only year seven and I would start off writing in and then I think in about when she was year eight um, she started writing in it herself and of course when she came for her lessons I always have a big big lovely uh, tub here of colorful pens she would choose her color purple nearly always being one of them because she's a big purple fan hence the purple book and she would write um, in the book what her practice was going to be for the coming week and this would be something that we would discuss together and we would just make sure that the words were right and we'd talk about it and then she would write it down of course now we're all in lockdown you know she's now at home she has bought her own pens that she has that lives specifically by the piano but it was a and she's she's still writing down exactly what it is she has to do and I write exactly the same in my notes as well but it was a sad day last week because she reached the last page and I have to say this is um, Sharon would be impressed because it's an incredibly neat book and um, she reached the last page and she's already got quite excited about ordering a new book and I think it really brings home to me the importance of getting our teenage students in particular to take charge of their notebooks and what they have to write down there's no good sending ending the lesson saying so you know what you've got to do for next week I'll see you then that leads to probably confusion from the student and a lack of clarity from you so every week with your students just take a few minutes towards the end and say so let's just write down together exactly what it is you're going to work on what would you say are the main three things from today's lesson and it could be that their three things aren't quite the three things that you thought in that case you just have to accept them <laughs> write them down yourself and then think well okay next week there you go, you go back to your reflection and your daily pages. How can I be clearer, therefore, in what it is that the main things are going to be? So do ask your students, let them go and get a really, really beautiful book. You know, order it online, have the pens and crayons. And yes, it takes a little bit longer in a lesson. However, the learning that comes out is far more significant and it is much more worthwhile. And students end up being completely motivated because they are in charge of their learning. So there we go, um, three books to read, or three things to do, all with books and writing. First of all, The Artist's Way, write some daily pages, get stuff out of your head, or have an artist date with yourself. Second thing, get yourself a teaching book and just jot down very quickly any really fantastic phrases that come to mind, because we all have them. Third thing, give ownership of practice and writing to the student by get, encouraging them to have their own book and writing things down in it. Well, I can see I've got quite an audience there uh, today, so I'm just going to see hello to, oh, I can see uh, Neve is there watching and Elizabeth is there watching. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for um, spending this, these few minutes with me. Wherever you are in the world, take care, keep safe. See you next week. Bye-bye.